Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Row Valley's podcast. We are, I'm, I got goosebumps, you guys. We are super excited. We got uh, some authors that we're going to be interviewing today on a very special project from uh, Dringy Hattie, and this is called Coming to America, and it's a compilation book of short stories of uh, real immigrants that have come to this country and, uh, and their stories behind it. It's so exciting um, because there's so much life in that book. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce our, uh, our cast today. We have uh, Drini Hattie. Uh, I'm not, not going to do the, the last names uh, because I'll put those in the description below, okay? But I've got Drini, I've got Doug, I've got Barbara and Danuta. And we may have some others joining us on this fun little journey this morning. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. So guys, welcome to the podcast. We're great to have you. Glad to have you, I should say. And I'm, as you can tell, I'm tripping over my words because I'm so stoked about this. I got the book a few days ago. And um, man, I got to tell you, as, I, as I'm skimming through it, I did not read the whole thing. Okay, because I don't want to spoil the ending. I want people to to purchase this book because it is worth the buy for sure. But um, it is uh, it's very touching, uh, uh, super exciting, kind of an adventure um, that uh, that I'm just ready to jump into. So we're going to start off with Drini because she is the one that uh, uh, compiled this uh, these stories and has also written in the book herself, and she's an accomplished author. Uh, so Drini. Um, Tell us about the book. Why did you come up with this concept in the first place? Okay, first of all, Alex, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you and that you're doing this. Um, well, ever since we immigrated to America 37 years ago, um, this was in the back of my mind that somehow... Um, I would like to share our story. And at that time, I wasn't an author. But then later on, when I started doing the anthologies, this is the actual ninth anthology I'm doing. Uh, ever since I started that, I thought I have to do this, coming to America stories. And um, as an immigrant, I know a lot of, a lot of my friends are immigrants and uh, especially from South Africa. So that was my reason. I, I really wanted to share our story and then give others the chance to do the same. So and, how, did you, uh, how did you go about picking who was going to uh, be in this book, you know, the authors? How did you go about the, the process of, of compiling so this? I'm I'm part of uh, several South African you know immigration groups, seven South African groups. Um, that uh, Danita is also part of, and um, and well, we're also part of Savitu. It's South African Women in South Africa, and uh, it's an actual magazine that we both write for. And Danita is also the editor for that. And or used to be, <laughs> and she edited my last two books. But um, so I put the call out on these uh, Facebook pages that I'm looking for stories of, you know, people coming from all over the world, not only, not only from South Africa, but England. I mean, several, several. As you know, these several stories from several countries, and. Um, but the key thing was you had to come to America. That was the, the main thing I wanted people to, to read it and experience. And those that went through the same uh, to read it and just know that they're not alone in coming to America. That's excellent. I, I believe that there are 25 stories compiled in this book. Is that correct? Yeah, there's actually um, more, but uh, I, I, I've got three stories in the book, so um, it's actually 28, or if you okay. count the first one, uh, one fine day, it's 29 stories, yeah. Okay, so I'd like to ask the group this question, um, and, and it's, kind of a, it's kind of a deeper question. What was the, uh, 
what was the reason for you um, to to immigrate to uh, America in the first place? Kind of give me some insight into the background, what was happening in your, uh, you know, in your life at that point uh, to make this huge and monumental decision. Um, so, yeah, just uh, Barbara, let's start off with you. Well, actually, I didn't make the decision. My story actually involves my grandparents made the decision for me and really when Drini asked me to write this story, the story actually started two years ago with my grandson when I became a grandmother and I held this child in my arms for the first time, I realized this child was a child of four continents, okay? <laughs> because he was a, a child from Europe, a child who my grandmother had lived in, in um, Egypt and um, he, his grandfather on one side is from Honduras. Uh, and then there was, you know, the Greek part of me and my, my husband's Austrian, English, Swedish, German, and Cherokee. And so there's this baby in my arms who's, you know, more Greek than anything. And so I'm the Greek part. And so, um, but my grandparents made this decision amidst uh, genocide, horrible strife. Um, a lot of what's going on in the world right now was going on at the turn of the 20th century and then way into the roaring 20s. Wow. And so pandemic and everything, it's interesting, the political things that were going on then and the 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 religious things. I mean, a lot of it mirrors that time with the, the sickness and everything it kind of makes you wonder. But that's really what prompted me. And so Dreamy asked me to write this story. And at first I was like, a bit taken aback because, well, how am I going to do this? But then I thought about my grandmothers who knew each other on this itty bitty little tiny island off the coast of Turkey, which is the easternmost point of Greece, which is almost a forgotten little part, a forgotten itty bitty little island that um, these two girls who never dreamt that their progeny and my grandparents would wind up far flung across the pond in New York City and Baltimore City, and that their children would wind up meeting each other and getting married. And here I am living in West Virginia, of all places, <laughs> having lived in Utah, which is how I met Doug and Dreamy. Okay. And, and that is what prompted me. But that immigrant mentality has never completely left me that I don't ever stop appreciating the United States of America because it was so deeply ingrained in me by my father, by my mother. Um, and, and so we in turn have, have really, my children never stop appreciating this country and in turn their Greek bloodlines too and their others. So, so. You, just, uh, you just released something in my brain <laughs> that everybody has a story, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. got a story about yeah. their lives, about things, the trials, tribulations, all these things that you go through. But what you just said was uh, fascinating because you have that plus this immigration, this moving, this this changing now lands and, and changing cultures and all this stuff on top of that, which makes it super fascinating to me. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. <laughs> the new Tell us your, you know, what what prompted you or your family uh, to come to the uh, to America, and uh, you know, you guys, I, I don't want you to forget this because this is a, first of all, it's a great picture, and it is a great title. I love it. I love the Statue of Liberty in the background. Uh, it's fantastic. Good job on that, Drini. Uh, but Danuta, tell us tell us a little bit about your uh, background and story. Okay, sure. If I may, uh, I just want to say that I loved Barbara's story. She, the way she described it now in the book is pretty much, you know, how she described it. And as an editor of the book, um, it brought me to tears too. And, you know, editing, this wasn't the easiest thing being an immigrant because you feel these emotions and, you know, being so immersed in the actual book, um, you know, Barbara's book, uh, Barbara's story in this book really, um, it got me <laughs> so it's a Thank definite you. read um i highly recommend reading uh, the book and barbara's story and um yeah so to answer my question about you know what brought me here um so it's not actually my uh my doing if you must um my husband worked for microsoft in south africa and he was offered a job in america through the same company and um, so we were 
able to choose between either Seattle or New York at that time. This was seven years ago. Um, yeah, he chose, uh, we both did. We actually chose New York because we were, you know, young and we didn't have kids at the time. And it seemed like a fun city, fun place to be. And, you know, we kept our options open. We wanted to see what it was like. And, you know, we could always move back if we didn't like it. We ended up loving it. Um, we, we've moved away from New York now. We now live in New Jersey um, because we have two young kids and we just felt, you know, the lifestyle here was more similar to how it was in South Africa, you know, where you could have a house and the backyard and everything. And, you know, we still in drive, we're still in driving distance of New York. So uh, if we ever want to visit, we can do that. And, you know, so it's just been a fun adventure and uh, we actually don't want to go back in the end, you know, we, we've made this our home. Uh, there are so many more opportunities and, uh, you know, we've actually changed as people too. The being here changes you as a person. You become exposed to so many different things in so many different ways, and you sort of integrate that into your life as well. Um, yeah, that's that's ex excellent. And you're and you're the editor of the book. That's uh, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. All right, uh, Doug, we're going to save you for last. Uh, tell us about uh, um, your wife and and a little bit about what prompted them to to come to America. Okay, um, Connie was born in 1970, but her family lost a lot of these things, lost, were opposed to the communism after World War II. And they owned a very upscale restaurant and her father was a top amateur boxer and they lost the restaurant, it was taken from them. And they lived in a one room, a one room hovel behind the restaurant. Her father, who has now passed away, a very brave man, was unable to leave the country to compete and when the 56 revolution failed, he was basically imprisoned in what the equivalent of a concentration camp for like two or three years and tortured in what is now a museum in Budapest called the House of Terror. But they sort of grew up in an internal exile. She was born and they were sort of shunned, but she didn't never quite understood why until she learned the history. But one thing really struck in her mind, she loved to listen to Voice of America. She listened to that over and over when she was growing up in a place called Kaposvar, which we visited again recently. And it encouraged her to learn English and she learned it and she went to school. And once communism fell, she, her, with her, she and her father were determined to get her into a Western university. And the, the book talks about how she accomplished that and um, the people who helped her along the way. And it's sort of the, the story ends with um, her actually on an airplane just about to land in Salt Lake City. So the story is more of her family's history and her personal desire to want to come to, to America based on the promise of Voice of America and always thinking about the more freedoms they had like that and stuff like that. But I, I have to put a, a, a shout out for her late father, who's one of the bravest men I ever knew. I mean, he went through so much. And I don't know. When I asked her about the story, I think Drini first told me, hey, um, do you want to sort of listen to her and sort of transcribe it and write it? Tati said, no, I want to do this. <laughs> okay. And she was really excited. And it, is, it struck me, it, it was a pleasant surprise because she's very, um, my, my wife's a bit of a workaholic. And so the idea that she would set aside three and four days to draft something like this and go over through edits, I was very, very pleased. And to me, it's, it, 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 I, it helped me understand the, how this resonated with her how our immigration experience was so ex ex important to her and exciting to her. That's a, wow. You know, um, I, I'm starting to like interviewing authors because you guys can weave the tales. I love it. Um, so you're, you're raising all kinds of questions um, that, that I'm curious about. And um, I guess one of them is uh, those of you that are immigrated or your, um, your spouses, um, were the things that you're searching for here in America, did they come to fruition for you? And anybody can just answer, let's just jump around. And, but but did, they, did they come to fruition? In other words, people talk about the American dream and different things like that and, and the freedom um, uh, uh, from oppression and different things that you just mentioned, Doug. Um, did, did things come to fruition? And I know nothing's perfect. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. But but from what your anticipation and um, you know your 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 vision of what America was, did that? How how did that work out for you? 
Well, I'll, I don't yeah. want to hog, but I'll just say really quickly, Connie told me last night that her, what she always wanted, her father, it was just her and her father. Her father had a lot of his emotion and ability to empathize taken out through the torture, right? And she always wanted a family. And she said her, there's a, the American dream for her was she came here and she had a family, okay? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Yes, and um, I and actually I didn't answer your question about um, why we came to America. Oh, please. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say, Danita, uh, just what she said about her story, um, what I found interesting is um, her forefathers, you know, her story is about them coming, her and her husband coming to America, but also about her forefathers and what, what they went through, you know. So uh, I just loved her story. And the same with, um, you know, Barbara, the, that first paragraph. Do you have the book with you, Barbara? Can you read it? Um, the first okay. paragraph? Or you can read it, Alex. Yeah, because I don't want to let the dog in here because I'll start barking. Okay, okay. Alex, <laughs> do you have the book with you? Yeah. Can I read it? Yeah, go ahead. You can read it. Absolutely. Okay, it's the last story. And um, what's interesting, uh, Danita, she's not only editor, she she does extreme research to make sure that every detail in the book is correct. I mean, I, I'm so glad I happened on her. I was just mm -hmm. devastated when my previous editor um, couldn't edit my books anymore. And then uh, being part of Savita magazine, uh, the group, um Antoinette, um our leader <laughs> she su suggested that uh, I asked Anita and so she's been doing the last two books and it's just been the thing she came up was just amazing she really made the book shine but I will read that first paragraph in Barbara's story my story begins with a little boy who lives in Phoenix, Arizona. His bloodlines tell a true story of America, for he is one, for he is of Hellenic, <laughs> yeah. Austrian, English, Swedish, German, Cherokee, Honduran, <laughs> sorry, I can't pronounce everything, Irish and Italic ethnic lineage. At two years old, he has no idea that so much of the world runs through his veins, but it is in the Hellenic line, which makes us one quarter of his lineage of which I will write. It comes from his mama, who is my daughter. This makes my grandson a fourth generation American by his roots. I just love that paragraph but uh, a wonderful beginning of story. But uh, then, um, okay, so also, uh, yeah, Danita, I mean, the, the part in your story that I love is where you actually stand in the same, you walk through the old part of, of the city that you grew up in, right? Yeah. And there she stands and she's walking with, you're walking with your aunt, right? This yeah, so uh, I didn't actually grow up um, over there. That's okay, where yeah, my... Just... Okay, so uh, that part that Drini's right uh, speaking about uh, takes place in Poland. It's where my father and his family are from. They were born there and they moved to South Africa in uh, the 1980s, also due to communism, just like um, Katie's story. Um, and... Uh, yeah, basically, I went back to Poland to visit and, you know, I go there quite frequently. And uh, when I was about six years old or something, I went to this small town with my parents and uh, we met my grandfather. And, you know, he stays in that town. So we were walking through this old town. And uh, many years later, uh, this was about 2022, um, I met my uh I met up with my aunt who, you know, was somehow no longer in contact with my dad for quite a, a few years. Um, my dad had then passed away at the time. And so we go back to the small town and we just, we're walking together with my husband and my kids. And 
um, I sort of just remembered that that was where we were. And at that time I asked my aunt, where were we standing in, you know, this picture that I, that I had of my dad and my mom and my grandfather. And she basically told me to turn around and look behind me. And we were standing ironically in that very spot, almost on the same, yeah. you know, oh. stairs. I mean, not stairs, like stepping stones. And that's also partly why Barbara's story got me because she describes um, how they're on their yeah, yeah. Um, ancestral island. I think, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Costa Luisa or something. Costa Luisa. Costa yeah. yeah. So they're basically there. And she describes, you know, the, the stones, the paving stones and how they bent down to kiss it as well. And it, that's that's the part that really got me emotional because, you know, the different generations of family, you know, they move from place to place. And when you go back to those places, there's just something in the air about, yes. about that place, you know, and that's, a, that's, that's really me. cool. That's really cool. I do want to get, uh, take a minute to uh, introduce and welcome Kobe. Uh, oh, is it Kobe. Pretorius? Hi. <laughs> yes, it's Kobe Pretorius. Nice All right. to meet you. I got it right. Well, Hello, welcome Kobe. to, welcome to the podcast, Kobe. And uh, basically, the question is, um, you know, um, was America, when you immigrated to America, did it, um, did it fulfill the dreams, the expectations that you were, that you were coming to this new country and, and did it fulfill things for you? Well, clearly it did because we're still here and it's 27 years later and we absolutely love where we are. Um, I think we arrived in the 90s and, um, you know, it was an exciting time uh, to be an immigrant. America was this bright, shiny place. My husband came as a, a student and a researcher and um, there were just so many opp opportunities and um, I mean, he just, we, we sometimes said, um, coming to America from South Africa, he and we had a visa, so we weren't automatically like we were supposed to only be here for the four years that he studied. And so he said sometimes he felt like he was standing outside a, a, a playroom and he was looking inside and there were all these incredible toys and all these kids who got to play with it but we were on the outside looking in and you just wanted to be so bad to be part of that that scene where every the people had just these unbelievable equipment and the latest and the greatest and then somehow the door opened a slither for us and we got let into that 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 playroom where we got to play with the fabulous toys ourselves <laughs> that's awesome now you just uh you just conjured up another question for me and uh and the question is again just to everybody answer when it when you you know when something comes to mind um but um how important i'm i mean you you're obviously wrote a short story for this uh compilation book coming to america right here you guys in case you haven't seen it and you're coming into the podcast a little bit later this is the this is the book right here by Drini Hatting um but uh, so how important is it for you to tell your story uh, uh you know it's a it's a beautiful book but but besides the book how important is it for you to share for people to know about uh, uh immigration about people coming from other lands to America in particular how important is it to you well oh. I I I feel that it it it's important for everyone including Americans you know American born citizens to know what it is what people will do to come to America, everything they went through, everything they sacrificed, leaving everything they ever knew, they ever loved to come to America. So that that's one of the reasons I, I did this book was to, to share the stories from all walks of life. I mean, every Everyone, like you said, everyone has their own story. And uh, some come from really terrible circumstances and others just wanted a better life for their 
for their um, children. Right. And um, so I think every story in this book, as you know, you see it, you just skim through the book, uh, Alex, but when you read it, you will really see um, uh, everyone's story. And uh, some some of the, uh, the authors that wrote said, oh, I don't have a special story. And Quibi, you were one of them. <laughs> I just want to remind you. <laughs> and uh, I told her that, no, you've, you've got a story and you've got to tell it. And she listened, and I'm so glad. But, um, yeah, there, there was, I mean, something when you come from South Africa to America is that you can go back. But going back uh, means you go back to a place where you definitely want to see your family that's still there. And that's, that's what draws you back to South Africa. But at the same time, the quality of life is, is not good. Uh, you know, I do not even have one family member that's not been touched by crime, by home invasions, carjackings, uh, the list goes on, even even rape. I mean, the list just goes on. It, it's so so that you, you can go back and you can go and visit. But for us personally, we are glad we are in America. And you still like one of the stories, Gabriel um, Snyman, Harvey Snyman. He shares his story in uh, stories in the book, and he talks of uh, almost like survivor guilt. And um, when I really think about it, I think we all feel like that. Is that yes, we we are very glad to be in America, but sometimes when you hear something else that happened, like my recently my my sister had her fourth. A home invasion and the drama and the fear and everything she went through so so yeah there is there is survivor's guilt like harvey mentioned right. but so i sort of um, lost my train of thought now but yeah i i think i guess your question is coming to america if if it realized your dreams and um i think it did after 37 years my my children have their own lives and they're happy and and uh, yeah and Jan and I'm really happy and today's our thirty sorry our fifty third wedding anniversary yeah. and uh, yeah. thirty seven <laughs> yeah and my my seventy fourth birthday so birthday. I've <laughs> I've been in now officially. I've lived in South Africa 37 years, and uh, now I've been in America 37. I don't know if that makes me more of an American, but yes. All right. So, Barbara, you were going to make a comment about... I was. I, You know, I, I'm listening to Drini talk, and, and, and the thing is, I've read every one of the stories more than once. And the thing is that, especially with, and I don't, I almost don't want to say this, but I think, feel like I need to, with the current climate that's in this country and the divisions that I, I feel that just kind of make me sick. And when reading this, the, the thing that is so um, wonderful about this is that the more I read the stories in this book, the more I realize, and I'm so Greek and talking with my hands, the more, the more I realize that we have so much more in common as American citizens, that there are so many things that it doesn't matter from where we hailed, that we have things that we, that, that ties, that tie us together, that we love um, our homeland, our fatherland, that we love the things that brought us here, that we all want a better life for our children, that, um, that we came here, some of us for different reasons, but we all want the same things for our children, that we have an, a deep appreciation for what this land has done for us and for our progeny and for what we want for them, okay? And so that, and that even though we come from different parts of the world and different ethnicities, we are American citizens and we love that flag. And that's something that, that I really feel is so important and is so, 
really timely. There's such a timeliness to this book and it's so positive. And I feel that that's something that is so needed in the world and in this country right now. And so that's why I, what I wanted to say about this book, that it's just a shot in the arm, a, a feel so good. It's a feel good book at a time that is so deeply needed in this country. Excellent. Nice comments. Uh, Doug, do you want to add something to that? Well, I was talking to Cotty last night and in the last 10 years, we've been able to um, reunite or at least even initiate relationships with her mother's side of the family, which didn't happen because of divorce and things like that long ago. And and Cotty was always the kid who was taken away from her mother to her father. And so we've got like 20 people who are eagerly awaiting this book for Christmas, all right, oh that we're going to mail to them so they can learn these things. And believe, believe it or not, Hungary, um, English is pretty well, <laughs> English is understood a lot there, particularly by the younger people. So they they are going to get her story and and learn about why she came to America and the feelings she had with her father. And it's just been really good. And I also, that also extends to my family that they don't, they're still learning about my wife's experience. Cause I mean, I do nothing about this stuff. I've learned so much about it. So I think touching on what Barbara said, there is a, an, an understanding and empathy that people can grasp from reading these stories. And, um, and it can at least provide a um, a positive way of looking at this issue rather than the rancor and anger that extends over the world, to be honest. So, yeah, as I was mentioning, um, the, uh, the history has got to be really important to you. Um, I can't understand it, um, not having moved, moved to another country and what it's like uh, to, to do that. And um, so, you know, as far as the history goes and the, and the lineage and the legacy and all these kinds of things, whether, whether it was something, uh, for example, of a, a, a family immigrating because of a, a job, for example, okay, or uh, for oppression or for poverty or all the many things, um, you know, that would, that would, would cause somebody to move from their country. I mean, that's, that's kind of a big deal, right? But can I mention one thing? You talked about history. When we were there last summer, we went to to towns that had like World War II memorials with people's name on it that had died. And we saw like un uncles, great uncles of Cotty and things like that, and their their names etched on there. And it, it was just really, really interesting. And we go through, we went, went into town hall records to try, you know how Mormons are obsessed with genealogy, all right? So we're going into... um into town hall records and finding the names of people going back, you know, two, three, four generations. It was really interesting to do that and see the statues with the names on them. Alex, if if I can chip in at this point, um, what I have to say about the story I wrote, I'm the, I have the second story in the book, um, is how my story would have been different if I wrote it, if we were here two years. And if we were here 10 years, and now that we have, we've been here 27 years, the story changes where in the beginning, it would have been more a story of sort of surviving and arriving and growing our tiny little baby roots in the community. But by now, 27 years later, uh, my story have completely changed because now I have children, college age who has grown up in America. I've grown up with them in America learning about baseball and basketball and the sports and the things that we became immersed in that I didn't know. But I'm also dealing with my um, elderly parents in South Africa and sort of so when I wrote my story, we've been here also like Drini half and half, almost like 27 years in South Africa, 27 years in America, um, is now I, I find myself in that spot where you're sort of torn between you have your children here, but we have we, my father-in-law just passed away in South Africa. We have my mother-in-law who's trying to figure out what happens next. I have my own parents in their 80s and to sort of 
you know, for me being a middle-aged woman, you're torn and, and you're torn not just in this country, but you're torn, torn a continent apart. And um, so that is a whole new experience for me as an immigrant to navigate where in the past, my parents could come here and now our job is to be taken, taking care of them so far away, which is hard. Right. Well, you know, and you bring something to my mind, okay? So um, my both of my son-in-laws um, are from Mexico, and they have family there too. And I, I, um, I see the stress on their faces when um, they, they have to, uh, sometimes you have to divide yourself, right? Uh, because, because part of it's the old country, part of it's over there, and, and they live in that culture, still that culture, right? Uh, and then over here, they've uh, assimilated into the American culture. And uh, there's almost like a, a kind of a weird divide when, when they go back. And, and I hear the stories and it's just, it's like they're different, you know. And just like you said, Kobe, of uh, being here 27 years, it, um, you know, you, you are different, right? Your kids are different. And, and, and the old, and your parents in the old country, um, you know, they're still your parents from the old country. They haven't changed, they're, they're still there. And so uh, it's, uh, you know, that's an interesting dynamic that you just made me think about of, of what you guys um, have to, I don't wanna say deal with, but what you have to go through to, when you go back and you visit and, you know, Doug, like you said, the history of seeing their names etched in on a stone and, and all these things, it's just so fascinating. Uh, Danuta, tell us a little bit about that, that aspect of it. So I think Kirby makes a very valid point, you know, during the whole stage of, you know, your new life in your new country, you are quite different at different stages. You know, as you get here, you try to figure things out. It's literally, as she said, a survival. You try to find a home, you figure out how things work, social security numbers, like, you know, the everyday things that you have to get in order in your life. And then you slowly settle in and then you you adjust to, you know, like Gabriel Sneiman says in his um, story, you know, you, you have to go through new things sometimes, like getting a new driver's license and uh, doing, you know, you have to do the learner's test again some, in some states, and then you have to do the driver's test. And then, you know, you kind of feel small in a way. You you know, you did that when you were a teenager in South Africa. Now you're an adult and you have to do it again and, you know, applying for a job. And you, you're kind of starting your life over in some ways. And, you know, it can be a bit traumatic sometimes. You feel, you know, like you're going backwards almost. And then once you've overcome those things, you move on and then you come across, you know, new challenges and you overcome those. And also Gabriel mentions in his story about some envy and bitterness and feelings that you have. You know, you you see other people in, in your neighborhood. They have their families over and you end up having no one there and you deal with those challenges. And then you overcome those things and, you know, then you deal with what Kobe says. You have family back home and they get old and then you're facing a different stage in life. So you know, I think it's quite um, a good book for Americans to read because then they get to see a different perspective. And I guess it doesn't matter where you come from. You can be an immigrant from any country coming to America. You kind of have what I call the immigrant experience. You know, you all go through very similar things, even though your story is very different. You know, the reasons you came here could be different. But at the end of the day, you all still go through those same feelings of you have to start over. You have to figure things out. You you know, you, you feel that envy and bitterness and then you finally make friends and then you feel better and then your parents age and, you know, it, it's the same thing for everyone, I guess. Well, so. you know, and, and I, and I appreciate those comments because, you know, I'm going back on what Brock, Barbara said earlier and that is, um, you know, the, uh, it's a timely book. Okay. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a timely book at, at the right time. Um, and, and the, and that's important. the The other thing that I that I want to ask you guys um, is uh, when you think about the past and you think about your new lives here in America, whether it's been twenty seven years or or two years or whatever, um, are there? And I guess in everybody's life, there's there's regrets and and things like that. Do you have like any any regrets of about about coming here because uh, yeah it's positive 
And and uh, Kobe, you said something that just resonates with me, and that and that's twenty seven years later, and Drini too. Twenty, you know, twenty seven years later, uh, and things have changed. The country has changed, and and you see different things, and how uh, immigrants uh, view this country as opposed to Americans, and so on and forth, so forth. And I'm not trying to go into a political stance because that's not what I that's not what I'm getting at. But my what I'm trying to get at is is did you have re any kind of regrets that that you think back and think, ah, oh, you know, maybe this, 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 this. What's your thoughts? Barbara, Barbara we'll start off with you. Uh, well, my thoughts are, you know, I'm American board, so I'm going to take it to a different level. I went to, when I went to Castellotis or Greece, okay, I thought, can I live here? And I thought, yeah, I could live here, but I have one foot that just is never, ever going to want to leave the United States of America. And so right, yeah. did I feel at home? Sure, I absolutely. I stepped off that ferry boat, never having met any of those people. And I bent down and I kissed those stones in the harbor. And the first thing that, that happened was all these people reached out and hugged me. Welcome, cousin. Welcome, cousin. Welcome, cousin. And it's funny. Well, everybody is related on that island, but that's a whole other <laughs> issue. <laughs> that's a whole other issue. But but could I? Oh my, yeah. There, there's a reason for that. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> we go, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but um, you know, I you know, I I for me, I I I I my husband even and I even talked about going and living in Greece forever. We actually that is something we rolled around because we didn't necessarily love the way things were going in our country. And the point is, is that, no, we're not going to leave our country. We're going to stay and fight for our country. Okay. Yeah. This is our country. Yeah. Do I want to go back to Greece and visit? Yeah. I've been twice. Am I going to go again? You better believe it. But this is my country. This is where my grandchild is growing yes. up. You know, and, and I, totally agree with uh, Barbara the um, going back to South Africa um, regret regrettably um, I'm the outsider now mm. and um, I uh, Barbara and you know um, even how do you pronounce her name, her name uh, that also wrote for, for the book uh, Evangelia 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 Okay, you know uh, her story, and um, and I'm in Danita too. But uh, what happened is she still longs for her own country, so that also happens. But when she went back, um, she was the outside, and I feel like the times I went back to South Africa uh, mainly to visit my mother. Um, and you know, sisters and brother and everything, uh, they carried they carried on with their lives, you know. And I'm now the visitor, and um, so that that definitely, you know. And and you've got to be streetwise going back in these. Mm. You can't travel on your own. So yeah, it's it's um, it's different. And Alex, also your question about um, regrets. Uh, the one thing I always think of is my extended family, the cousins, the nieces, aunts, um, all that extended family that I grew up with, uh, my children do not have here. They don't even know their cousins. They don't mm -hmm. know their nieces. Mm -hmm. nieces. So yeah. that, that is the one regret. And uh, sadly, my uh, five years ago, doing that, that flight back home that I knew was coming for my mother's funeral. Um, yeah, they, they are regrets. All right. And um, uh, Doug, what about, what about your wife? What has she told you about that? Well, I think one regret Cotty has, it's not necessarily of, of leaving, but early in our marriage, she used to speak Hungarian to the children all the time. And over time, she gradually stopped doing that. And now we're all struggling to learn Hungarian. I'm on Duolingo yeah. twice a day, and the kids are trying to do it. And she feels she wishes she had continued to speak Hungarian um, oh, to the yeah. kids. Because they are, they are, they do have dual citizenship and everything like that. Wow. Um, 
and we own a home in Coppice Bar, and, and like Barbara, we're not, I mean, Connie probably considers herself more of American than Hungarian now, but we do hope to spend three or four months a year there when we both retire and stuff like that. But I think that the key answer would be, she wishes she had spoken Hungarian more to the kids growing up. Okay, and Danuta, I know you got to leave soon, so tell us if you have any regrets that come to mind about that. To be honest, I think um, I'm not so far in the game as everyone else, so maybe I'm not yet feeling those regrets. You know, maybe 37 years later, 27 years later, maybe I'll have something. But for now, it's not really a regret. It's more just, you know, missing family. You know, you, you miss out. I don't have regrets. I just... I just miss the family that I left behind. Okay. And Kobe, how about you? Yes, I think, um, I mean, part of the reason I wrote this story, uh, you asked about why we did it, is I, I did, I want my kids to know their roots and I want them to know where they're from. I think sometimes when you're a, a, a first generation, like my kids are, I don't think they realize how deep and wide of a family and roots we have in South Africa and the whole history. It's like they start here and, and it's like the branch broke off the, the, the family tree. And, wow. and, and I wanted them to realize, and, and so I think they missed out on those family stories a little bit and just, you know, the deep history of, I mean, we've been there uh, going back 400 years in South Africa. So I think they um they miss out on knowing how deep it is and that's why i wanted to write some of that down and i also uh, wanted my parents to know how we miss them and how we're concerned about them and so um yeah so that's part of why i i wrote it but also that's the regrets we have is that we're not always there for the the weddings and the funerals yes. and you know yeah. those big events Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys, I have one final question for you, and um, I'm 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 going to omit a certain word because I I will leave that to Drini towards the end of this podcast. So the, here's my question for you, and I want each and each of you to answer. Danuta, I'll start with you first. Okay. Um, why should people read this book? a tough question in some ways but um in some ways i think you know it just it just contributes to us to togetherness you know understanding the next person understanding where they come from you know what they went through and support uh, you know you can give support to people when you know they're going through a hard time I've quite often seen in our, as Jeannie's mentioned, the South African women in the United States group, there are a lot of them who are okay with the decision. And then there are some who really struggle with coming here. And I guess sometimes if they, if they could read a book like this, they can see that they're not alone in their mm, struggling, exactly. and, you know, in their struggles, they can see that other people go through similar, they can relate and, you know, you, you make friends, you have connections. And um, I think that's important. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's the main thing. Okay. Barbara? You know, I, I want to say for edification, illumination, and to develop empathy for our fellow man. I really want to say that three things to me. I think we can get three things from this book. Love it. Very succinct. I like that. Kobe? I, th I hope this book reminds Look, you know, if, when you're when, when you're an immigrant, we chose this country. There are, a, I mean, most Americans were born here. I think, like, I mean, <laughs> are Americans by birth? We're Americans by choice, and I think sometimes the Americans who are who were born here forget what a fabulous country they have. And we are so thrilled to be here. So I think what the book of um, reminds us is how thrilled we are to be here. Even, I mean, it's a, it's, there's a lot of problems and a lot of flaws and a lot of things that's probably not right, but we love being here. So, so appreciate what you have. Excellent, Doug. 
I think it's an, I'll echo what most people said. I think it's an opportunity for people to learn more about the experience of immigration and also get past some of the rhetoric and um, cliches that are tarnishing um, understanding of the issue. Okay, thank you. And Adrini, so uh, before you answer, I also want to just um, give you a cue to um, tell people how to purchase and where to go and where to look for this book and everything like that. But I do want to know from your, uh, your opinion and your um, response to why should people read this book? Okay. Um, so I just want to, you know, after so many, you know, mentioned how also the difficulty in coming here. Um, I've got a couple of quotes in the book, and this is an uh, author unknown, but moving from one country to another is, a easy, is the easy bit. Anyone can pick up a kitchen or a closet, but it takes guts and courage to walk away from one's life, to say goodbye to everything you know, to leave the com comfort of familiar and love, to begin a new life from scratch. That is when the fearless and the brave stand up. And um, do I have time to, to read something else? Sure. Okay, this is the letter we all received in becoming citizens of America at the when we receive our citizenship. Dear fellow Americans, I'm pleased to congratulate you on becoming a United States citizen. You are now a part of a great and blessed nation. I know your family and friends are proud of you on this special day. Americans are united across the generations by grand and enduring ideals. The grandest of these ideals is unfolding promise that everyone belongs, that everyone deserves a chance, and that no insignificant person was ever born. Our country has never been united by blood or birth or soil. We are bound by principles that move us beyond our backgrounds, lift us above our interest and teach us what it means to be citizens. Every citizen must uphold these principles and every new citizen by embracing these ideas makes our country more, not less American. As you begin to participate fully in our de democracy, remember that what you do is as important as any anything any government does. I ask you to serve your new nation, beginning with your neighbor. I ask you to be citizens building communities of service and a nation of character. Americans are generous and strong and does and decent, not because we believe in ourselves, but because we hold beliefs beyond ourselves. When this spirit of citizenship is missing, no government program can replace it. When this spirit is present, no wrong can stand against it. Welcome to the joy, responsibility, and freedom of American citizens. Sure. God bless you and God bless America. Sincerely, George W. Bush. Very good. Well, you know, you reminded me of something reading that letter because I read that letter before. Both of my son-in-laws are American citizens. They went through um, the process and did everything um, because they wanted to become American citizens. And uh, and in, in an odd way for me, that was one of the like the proudest moments of my life witnessing that. It was cool for them to take yes. that on. Yeah, it was really cool. I I think one of the the best um, reviews I uh, you know that really explains this book too is and and uh, why people should buy it. These stories show the bravery, courage, and sacrifices that people make and the risks they take in search of a better life, not only for themselves, but for their families and generations to come. 
And I think, um, you know, that's important for Americans, like Quibi also says, that Americans reading this must know how wonderful this country is and how we appreciate being here and having been accepted to this country. And for those other immigrants that le reads these stories, it will make them feel that they're not alone. Everyone went through what they went through. So how do people find this book and how do they uh, get, a, get a copy? Okay, um, definitely on Amazon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure if these other books, with, I, I'm guessing there is with coming to America. So definitely when you do go and look for the book, it should say coming to America, Drini Arting. And then uh, more locally to Utah, Octon, where you live, the Queen Bee sells it. And you can also get it at uh, Barnes & Noble. And um, I'm not sure if they actually have it on the shelves, but you can, you know, order it there. So that's where you can get the book. Excellent. Well, it has been a wonderful, wonderful uh, interview, podcast, discussion, however you want to call it. Um, I've learned a lot and, um, you know, it was phenomenal. Thank you guys for sharing uh, your time. And, and we do want to thank the two that had to check out early uh, for joining us as well. Thank you for your time um, and uh, all the information to, to, to that Drina just talked about, about getting the book will be listed below. Um, and um, we're glad to to that you guys are tuning in and uh, thank you once again and one last time the name of the book is coming to america there we go and it is a compilation book um with a lot of different authors from all over the uh all over the globe and um and it's just phenomenal and i've just begun my wife actually confiscated this and she's going <laughs> to read it before me so she's already in a little bit <laughs> and thank you talks, Alex. so so there you go thank there's you, your first baby. endorsement my wife uh first endorsement and uh, we want to thank you guys again thank you for watching the rural valleys podcast we'll see you thank next you time. thank you bye. so much thank you alex bye-bye thank you bye-bye you guys you, alex